All right, guys, today I'm going to talk about how I lost 16 pounds and actually got stronger two months prior to my first powerlifting meet. How in the hell did I do that? All right, we'll get started. I started out at 10.4% body fat and at 153 pounds. And you can see I will eventually get down to 137 pounds before the last five pounds that I'm going to lose. And I, an estimate of 3.9% body fat. They were both measured on the same day of the week, at the same time of day, by the same exercise physiologist in a bod pod at a hospital. So, if you wondered. <laughs> so, I actually did weigh a little bit more when I came back from softball nationals. I had my softball team that I play with. We actually went to nationals. I told them, hey guys, I'd like to do this. But obviously, I was really bloated, guys. I was 159 pounds, and that was only two days before the, the bod pod test. So anyway, I had actually lost six pounds prior to even the first body fat test. But we're just going to say I went at 153. Okay, let's get down to the diet. As you just saw, I use cyclical ketogenic dieting. So what does that mean? Okay, a ketogenic diet under these terms, is 75% of your calories is from fat. Not grams. Grams of fat actually have more calories per gram than protein or fat, so you're actually going to consume less grams than 75%, but your calories, 75% of your calories are going to come from fat. So regardless if you're going to do a maintenance or a slight deficit, you don't want to go too severe, guys. 75% of your calories need to come from fat. If they don't, you're either getting too much from carbohydrate, so you're getting more than 5%, you should get closer to zero, or you might actually be getting too many calories from protein, and you have something called gluconeogenesis, which isn't true ketosis either. You want to be in true ketosis, because that'll ensure that you're saving your protein, you're not burning protein, and you're also, you have better energy levels. And I think the one benefit they don't talk about the most is how much it suppresses your hunger. It's truly amazing, guys. There's nothing like being in ketosis for suppressing hunger. I almost had to force myself to eat. And you're going to see here in a second, guys. I was losing tons of body fat with minimal extra work. I was basically saving most of what I did activity-wise for basic walks, recovery, stuff that I would do, and my training. You know, I'm not doing tons and tons of cardio like you see a lot of these guys doing. I needed to save my recovery for my new adventure of powerlifting. I was trying to successfully be the strongest in my entire life after being a pretty strong 20 and 30 year old. So I'm in my upper 30s in this video. I'm actually 38 and a half half and you can see I'm doing my training I'm mixing it up this is actually a, a bread that I found on the internet made with um, almond flour and butter and it only has like one gram of carbohydrate for what you just saw there so you can actually as you learn how to make food you can make it work so what's going to happen eventually here in a second is you're going to see me do a carb up which you're gonna do periodically from every two to three weeks. And that's why you see some vasodilation, you introduce some carbs for about a day. You're gonna carb up really quickly one day. So you almost kind of flip the diet on its head. You're eating now, instead of eating zero to 5% carbohydrate, you're eating about 70% carbohydrate. And that's why you don't just eat cookies and stuff like that when you carb up guys, because that actually has too much fat in it. Then when you're coming back in, trying to get back in ketosis, you actually have something with more fiber like that so you can pull back on the fat pull back on the carbs have your last meal where you have like a more of a full protein but fibrous meal so that you get a little push going you know and push out all the junk get a little more fiber in so this is after the first five weeks now these results are a little bit skewed and partially they're skewed in a bat in a great way it looks like like i actually gained 4.4 pounds of lean body mass 
and lost 10 pounds of body fat, but some of that is fluid from the carbohydrates, glycogen retention, the salad that I ate that you saw there, that chipotle salad, when actually what's going to happen over the next couple of days, you'll see here in the next few um, pictures, is you have kind of this whoosh effect where you're pushing out extra water. And so I'm just going to look absolutely peeled in a couple of days. So this is five and a half, six weeks in to the actual ketogenic, cyclical ketogenic dieting effect. And within five and a half, six weeks, I was already down to striking distance of making 132. If you guys didn't know, a lot of powerlifting organizations do a 24 hour weigh in, not all of them. And even the two hour weigh ins, guys still cut some weight. So I was within nine to 10 pounds of 132 at this moment. I think when I did my first five with cent deadlift, that's what this is video of. You know, I was only five weeks into the dieting and I was already down to 141 pounds after starting, you know, either, either way you look at it, 159 pounds or 153 pounds. I was down to 141 pounds and I hit a PR on my deadlift right here. So if you ever wondered if, if I do a ketogenic diet, am I going to have the energy to do the lifts? Yeah, it's powerlifting guys. You're not a bodybuilder. You're not going to be doing a whole bunch of hypertrophy, especially when you're trying to peak for a meet. So if you've ever wondered if you can do that, you can, I'm telling you right now, I actually did it. So you can see I can get in here, but you're also going to see where I made a mistake. I left my mistakes in here on purpose because, guys, the whole reason why I'm not going into this super detailed video of how to do ketogenic dieting down to the dime is because there's certain things that you need to learn to execute this properly. And you can see, guys, I was shredded. Now, that one meal, I started doing a few things that I got off track. And I'm not saying you have to be completely neurotic about your training and everything you eat. But like this stuff, this is showboating. Like I didn't need to be doing overhead presses with 154 pounds to see how much I could do, you know, compared to my buddies. They had a contest where they're seeing how much you could do your body weight. And obviously that was more than I actually weighed here, but I still smoked them because I was shredded. But that's not smart because I left a little bit of a gap for my training and that's going to take away from my training. And you're going to find how, how, pulling some of the fat, not getting back into ketosis right here, changing stuff up before I actually knew for a fact what was working, getting a little cute, trying to do too many things. And what's going to happen here, even though my body weight staying down is my energy level started to play with me. And so did, you know, my strength output. Here's a hundred or I'm sorry, 507 pounds again, just a few weeks after I had actually pull it up pretty easily. Right. And I'm going to miss, you know, and you can tell by the speed of the pull, something had changed. And so that's where guys, I don't want to be neurotic about things, but there is a method to the madness and I am very strict. So if you see some things like, like, wow, this guy is peeled or boy, he, you know, what's going on with this guy is like, when I say I'm going to do a diet, I do it hundred percent, you know, and if I don't, I screw up too. So. If you're wondering why I get the results I do sometimes, like, cause I do it, I follow it to a T and that way I know when I fail, I know where to go next. Cause if you're, if you have all these variables and you're unsure about things, if you're not measuring your food and doing all these other things, then there's too many factors out there of why you might be failing. So try to narrow it down. That's what's going to help you guys the most. Okay, so I'm getting ready for my final week. You can see the water I've got all lined up there because what you do, guys, to get that last extra water weight that is sitting on your body is you're going to overcompensate by drinking even more water than you normally would. So that's why you start out with two extra gallons each day. That's extra gallons, right? And then you taper it down, and your body gets used to pushing out all your extra water. That way, you put out, push out your extra water, but at the same time, you're not dehydrated. So if you do have like, in some cases, you know, some of these, these guys, they, they're cutting like 10% of their body weight. I would never recommend that guys. That's too much. It's, you're not going to rehydrate your tendons and ligaments. And I, I'm surprised that MMA fighters still do that. And 
they think it's okay. So I'd actually would go to drink a lot of like um, hot, like almost like a cocoa made with um, protein powder. Make sure you don't burn it. That's gross. Um, with a little bit of coffee in it and a little bit of coconut oil so that I would have a little bit of energy. But I'm trying to reduce the amount of food in my gut. You know, that's why I had the salad prior to that, if you remember that a few minutes ago. And I'm actually sipping on this stuff. So I do have a little energy, and I'm gradually pushing out extra water. And you got to remember, guys, you're going to be okay, right? Your body at this point is used to burning a lot of fat. You're going to be burning off some of it, but you don't want to be starving yourself. So I am actually consuming quite a bit of like whey protein and some coconut oil, just kind of sipping on it throughout the day, you know, making sure I don't go crazy. Um, and you'll see day by day, I'm putting the scale on there at my wife's against her request, not to show our old ugly floor in her old house, <laughs> but anyway, whatever, she'll get over it. And, um, you can see I'm just getting peeled right here. And so I will get all the way down to 137 pounds. So if you take that original weigh in where I did my first body, um, body fat test in the bod pod, I was 153 pounds. I'm going to be 137 pounds the morning prior to the weigh in. So at this point I just need to lose five more pounds. I'm completely hydrated, but you can see I have pushed out all my extra water. And I'm just left with a super lean body that's ready to lift because I've deloaded it at this point. So definitely not peaked. You know, I still had a lot to learn and get better form, but my body is ready. You know, I have it ready to go for my first meet. And you'll see, um, I hadn't, I didn't know, I was unaware that the defending UPA record holder at my weight class was going to be at the event. And I broke all of his records with my openers. So I broke his squat record. I broke his bench press record. I broke his deadlift record. And I obviously broke the total record. So I actually just blew it out of the water. All because I got my body ready. So if you've ever wondered, can I get lean and maintain my strength? You can. And I'll prove it. Because every meet after this, I kept getting stronger and stronger at the same weight class. So... There's a method to the madness, guys. I'm here to show up, help you guys out, and just follow this process that I'm going to lead you down, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions. Leave them in the comment sections below, you know. I have to be somewhat careful with, with diet because, you know, I don't want anybody to say I told them to do something crazy. I'm not. But I will try to help you guys out as much as possible, and I hope this video has helped you guys see kind of what I do and what the meth method to the madness is with my diet. Take care and have a great day.